Anti-Pope Francis recently deposed Joseph Strickland from his position as, quote, Bishop of Tyler, Texas, in the Vatican II Church. Pope Francis ordering the removal of the bishop in Tyler, Texas, who has been very critical of the Pope. Bishop Joseph Strickland has been accusing the pontiff of, quote, undermining the deposit of faith and criticizing him over LGBTQ issues. Earlier this year, the Vatican investigated Strickland's governance of the diocese due to reports of him making unorthodox claims. The Vatican says the Bishop of Austin will stand in as a temporary administrator. At first, they said, we're, uh, we're requesting that you resign. And I'd made it pretty, very public that I, I felt I couldn't resign. So they simply said, well, then you will be uh, removed. Uh, the letter that I was sent actually said I was relieved of the responsibilities as Bishop of Tyler. Strickland was, as far as we know, the only, quote, bishop in the Vatican II counterchurch who actually had control of a diocese, who was openly critical of anti-Pope Francis. Think about that. Think of all the horrible scandals and heresies committed by the total apostate anti-Pope Francis over the past 10 years, and Strickland is the only one with a diocese in the counterchurch who even criticized him? That's because the Vatican II sect under anti-Pope Francis is not the Catholic Church. It's the end times counterchurch, the Whore of Babylon. It's crucial to recognize that. It's a false church, a sect, operating under an antipope, and more proof of that comes out all the time. Consequently, the Vatican II sect under antipope Francis lacks the marks of the true Catholic Church, such as holiness. Strickland acknowledged that Francis removed him because he was too conservative. But do you have any idea as to why this was done? Well, John Henry, um, the only answer I have to that is because Forces in the church right now uh, don't want the truth of the gospel. They want it changed. They want it ignored. Even though Strickland is not a traditionalist, as we will see, he was still too conservative for the Vatican II sect because he criticized some things anti-Pope Francis is doing, and he was outspoken about some of the moral evils of our time. Strickland also opposed some aspects of the globalist agenda, that could not be tolerated from a, quote, diocesan bishop in the Whore of Babylon. And while anti-Pope Francis takes decisive action to remove Strickland, a man who is considered to be the most conservative, quote, bishop in the Vatican II Church in America, Francis simultaneously promotes and or allows countless radical heretics all over the place to remain in their positions, including so-called bishops in Germany who openly support condemned same-sex activity, and much more. A German bishop is admitting he's been defying the Vatican for years. Bishop Franz Joseph Overbeck of Essen recently stated his diocese has been blessing homosexual unions against the express instructions of the Vatican long before the dissident synodal way approved the practice. He said, I think it's right and theologically responsible to allow blessing celebrations for same-sex couples, but also for couples after a civil marriage or couples who have remarried after a divorce. And in Germany, a bishop is encouraging priests to bless same-sex couples. In a letter last week, Bishop Karl Heinz Wiesmann gave the go-ahead for gay blessings at churches in the German diocese of Speyer. The bishop said, the celebration must differ in words and symbols from a church wedding and, as an act of blessing, should expressly reinforce the love, commitment, and mutual responsibility that exists in the couple's relationship. Turning to Germany, the country's top bishop is explicitly condoning sexual sin. Limburg's Bishop Georg Betzing, president of the German Bishops' Conference, published a so-called sex education guide last week promoting the blessing of homosexual couples and the use of contraceptives. The guide states sexuality is not only between man and woman, but also between woman and woman, or between man and man, or between people who feel neither like a woman nor like a man. There are many bishops still in their see that are corrupted and connected to the McCarrick scandal. There are bishops that are closely connected, woven into the McCarrick story, and mm -hmm. there, there's been no action against them. Um, that, that double standard is troubling. Why? Why 
would this happen? When there is Father Rupnik, who just got the, the sexual abuser priest with all sorts of nuns begging for uh, redress of their abuse that they suffered, he's put into a diocese, no real sanctions. You have Cardinal Daniels, you have Cardinal Casper, you have all of these cardinals known to be unfaithful in so many ways, yet there's no sanction there. What does that tell you? It tells you that anti-Pope Francis is not opposed to those radical liberals and heretics. He's one of them. If he were opposed to them, he would remove them, just as he did with Strickland. He's a heretical anti-Pope leading a sect. But a lot of the people that he has appointed as cardinals, the people in the various offices of the Vatican, they haven't said confusing things. They've said things that contradict the deposit of faith. And the Pope has put them in place. If he disagrees with what they're saying, he's the Pope. He can clear it up very quickly, very simply. By the way, certain gaslighting fools, such as this demonic liar, falsely claim that Francis has actually cracked down on the heretics in Germany because he wrote a letter to four laywomen in which he expressed concern about what's happening in Germany. But as even LifeSite News, an organization that considers anti-Pope Francis to be the Pope, admitted, Francis's letter did not criticize or condemn the sexual immorality and related heresies being endorsed notoriously in Germany. Francis didn't even mention those matters. Rather, the letter criticized the constitution of the German Synodal Committee, which Francis thinks is not compatible with church structure. So, anti-Pope Francis did not remove the notorious heretics in Germany. They remain in their positions. Thus, don't listen to Satan's useful idiots who try to twist reality and lie on a regular basis in a demonic attempt to keep people in the Whore of Babylon and under a notoriously heretical anti-Pope. Now, although Strickland says some conservative things and we truly hope that he converts to the true Catholic faith, he sadly does not have the Catholic faith. He represents a false opposition and a deception. For example, Strickland endorses and accepts Vatican II's false ecumenism, which was condemned by the Catholic Church and the Popes. Near the end of October 2023, Strickland held an interfaith worship event with members of non-Catholic denominations on the meaning of Halloween. And now the East Texas Christian community gathered on the Tyler Square to promote the Christian meaning behind Halloween, setting the stage for All Saints Day. Christians joined together in Tyler for Day of Worship, Prayer, and Community Sunday ahead of Halloween. To remember that really Halloween is All Hallows' Eve, the Eve of All Holiness on All Saints' Day. In the Christian tradition, there's a great celebration called All Saints, and the Eve, that is the day before November 1st, which is All Saints, uh, October 31st, is all Saints Eve or All Hallows Eve. Led by Bishop Joseph Strickland, people came to learn the true meaning of All Hallows Eve and the two days that follow. It's a celebration of, of the saints of God, of, uh, of the martyrs, of uh, the faithful witnesses of Christ uh, in the world and who have come before us. Bishop Strickland says over the years, the holiday has changed to witches, ghosts, and candy. But he will always work to make sure people know it has religious roots. And the time to recognize that, yes, there's evil in our world, but it's our faith that Jesus Christ has conquered evil, and his love and goodness is avail available to all humanity. Along with the Catholic Church, other denominations joined in to unite in their faith. Pushing aside the differences that we have, and unifying up under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. Bishop Strickland hopes the event can be held annually as a way to bring Christians together. To hold or engage in such an ecumenical prayer meeting is to participate in non-Catholic worship. It is to approve of and join yourself to such worship. That's absolutely forbidden by Catholic teaching and the Pope's under pain of mortal sin. See our video, Vatican II is a new religion, which covers the church's teaching against participation in such ecumenical events. As Pope Pius XI taught, the apostolic see has never allowed its subjects to take part in the meetings or assemblies of non-Catholics. Strickland accepts that kind of false ecumenism because he's a man of the Vatican II religion, not of the Catholic religion. Strickland contradicts and denies true Catholic teaching. In fact, on May 11, 2020, Strickland published a document about ecumenism that endorses the Declaration Dominus Jesus, which was approved by Ratzinger and Antipope John Paul II in the year 2000. The Declaration Dominus Jesus teaches the heresy that Eastern schismatic sects that reject the papacy are true particular churches. 
That denies the Catholic Church's dogmatic teaching that anyone who dissents from the papacy or another dogma is alien to the Church of Christ. Therefore, a sect that rejects the papacy is not a true particular church of the Church of Christ. The Declaration Dominus Jesus also repeats the heresies of Vatican II on the matter of ecclesiology, such as the heresy that non-Catholic sects are means of salvation and the false position that when heretics are validly baptized into non-Catholic sects, they are joined to the body of Christ. No, when heretics, that is, those of the age of reason, not infants, who dissent from the papacy or another dogma, are validly baptized, those non-Catholics receive the character of baptism, but they do not receive grace or become part of the body of Christ. That's Catholic dogma. Strickland endorses those Vatican II heresies which are repeated in Dominus Jesus. In his May 11, 2020 document, Strickland also urged people to follow the, quote, wise instructions of, quote, St. John Paul II in Ut Unum Sint, a horrible encyclical filled with modernist heresies. John Paul II's Ut Unum Sint repeatedly promotes condemned ecumenical prayer meetings, including the Assisi event. It thereby leads people into what the Catholic Church considers to be mortal sin. Ut Unum Sint even approves the astounding Directory on Ecumenism, which discourages proselytism of non-Catholics and encourages Catholics to participate in non-Catholic worship in non-Catholic churches. Antipope John Paul II's Ut Unum Sint also repeatedly teaches the heresy that there are non-Catholic saints and martyrs. Quote, These saints belong to all the churches and ecclesiastical communities, which unlocked for them entrance into the communion of salvation. End quote. That's blatantly heretical. It's a denial of the Catholic dogma that there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church, that there are no non-Catholic martyrs, and that no one, even if he sheds blood in the name of Christ, can be saved unless he's in the bosom and unity of the Catholic Church. If John Paul II's statement here weren't bad enough, consider that this line in Ut Unum Sint even says that the non-Catholic sects themselves unlocked for them entrance into salvation. So according to John Paul II, not only can they be saved as non-Catholics, which is heresy, but the non-Catholic sects themselves unlocked for them entrance into salvation. Incredible. It's interesting to note that this passage is translated on the Vatican's website as, quote, these saints come from all the churches and ecclesial communities which gave them entrance into the communion of salvation, end quote. That translation sufficiently conveys the heretical meaning, but a more precise translation reveals the full extent of the malice behind John Paul II's heretical statement. The word John Paul II actually used in Latin is reservarunt, which means unlocked. According to John Paul II, all of these non-Catholic sects not only have saints, which is heresy, but the sects themselves unlocked salvation. Well, what do you need to unlock something? You need a key or the keys. John Paul II, or rather the devil in John Paul II, deliberately chose the word meaning unlocked to mock St. Peter, the papacy, and the keys that were given exclusively to the Catholic Church. Whereas Jesus entrusted the keys only to St. Peter and the Catholic Church, the diabolical apostate Antipope John Paul II taught that all the non-Catholic sects have saints and martyrs and unlock salvation. What a blasphemy. I made reference to this blatant heresy in the state of Vicantism debate last year. Do you accept the teaching of John Paul II and Ut Unum Sint that all the different sects have saints and that the sects themselves gave them entrance into salvation? That's what he actually says. Not only can non-Catholic sects have saints, which is blatant heresy against extra ecclesian themselves, but he says that the sects unlocked for them salvation. So according to John Paul II, they have the keys to the kingdom. Do you agree with that teaching of your quote Pope in Ut Unum Sint number 84? No, only Peter has the keys to the kingdom. Okay. Joseph Strickland thinks that this heretical encyclical, Ut Unum Sint, which leads people into mortal sin and heresy in various ways, is good and wise and should be followed because he doesn't have the Catholic faith and he's a false shepherd. He was totally deceived by Antipope John Paul II. For how Antipope John Paul II fits prominently into the apocalyptic prophecies, see our videos including Apocalypse Now in the Vatican, the Antichrist Distinguishing Mark, and the Temple of God and the Antichrist Located. In the same document on ecumenism, Strickland says that the body of Christ is broken. No, the church is indivisible by nature, and unity is one of its marks. Strickland's whole position reflects the false and non-Catholic modernist ecclesiology of the Vatican II religion, not the teaching of the Catholic Church. The fact that Strickland is actually a modernist who leads people into heresy and false ecumenism and keeps them in a counterchurch also reveals how the following false traditionalists are deceivers used by the devil as well. Notice how these heretical individuals, who some people wrongly think are true traditional Catholics, falsely portray Strickland as authentically Catholic 
when he most certainly is not. Bishop Strickland is a great bishop. There are very few good bishops out there, and Bishop Strickland happens to be one of them. Bishop Strickland really is America's bishop in so many ways. He is the last sort of strong bastion of Catholic orthodoxy in the episcopacy in America. You know, here is a man who is a defender of Catholic orthodoxy. Bishop Strickland, who in my estimation um, is, is, was the holiest bishop in the Roman Catholic Church. The holiest man, judging by track record, voting record. Hey, I may not live in Tyler, Texas, but he's my bishop. I'm a sheep. I can hear the sound of the shepherd in the voice of Bishop Strickland. Yes, Your Excellency. Amen and amen. Spoken like an apostle. Spoken like a successor to the apostles. We talk all about apostolic succession. What about apostolic success? Apostolic truth. And that's where Bishop Strickland excels. BB says Strickland is like Athanasius or St. John Fisher. I agree. Bishop Strickland must suffer with the church that God has commissioned him to serve, which is what he's doing so well, all the way now to the foot of the cross. So he's like St. John Fisher, and Bishop Strickland believes. He resisted them, and now he's been martyred. And you know what? For years now, maybe for a thousand years, maybe all the way to the end of time, They'll be telling his story because he was the one. He was the bishop of our time who had the courage to believe. That I would like to introduce now a successor of St. John who fills our hearts and our souls and our conference and this room tonight with so much hope. So much hope because he still believes. Bishop X, His Excellency, Joseph Strickland of Tyler, Texas. We are in a massive spiritual battle for the faith, and there are many deceptive false teachers who are leading people astray, sometimes blatantly and sometimes in a more subtle fashion. Satan's false opposition to the current Vatican to apostasy exists not only with clear modernists like Antipope Francis and Strickland, but with the false traditionalists just quoted and people like them. They give people the false impression that adherence to the Vatican II religion is compatible with a true adherence to the Catholic faith when it's not. Strickland was also deceived by Antipope Benedict XVI, who was one of the worst heretics in church history. In our material, we document Antipope Benedict XVI's astounding heresies and religious indifferentism based on research of 30 of his books and all of his speeches. Joseph Strickland, however, endorsed everything that Benedict XVI wrote. That, of course, includes Benedict XVI's promotion of false ecumenism, interfaith worship, attacks on the inerrancy of scripture, and much more. Strickland's statement is another example of how far he is from the truth and from a proper understanding of what's happening. In short, Strickland represents a false resistance and a deception. That's why he recently rejected Sadovacantism again, despite all the proof that it's the true position. He doesn't have the Catholic faith or understand it. The fact that Strickland represents a deception and a false resistance is also why, despite all the evidence against Antipope Francis and his own removal by Antipope Francis, he still leads people right back to the wolf, Antipope Francis, the non-Catholic leader of the Whore of Babylon. Pope Francis is the head of this body on earth representing Christ. That's why we pray for the Pope, for him as a son of God and for his role as the Supreme Pontiff. I also found it interesting that in his interview after being deposed, Strickland repeatedly mentioned that he is, in his view, a successor of the apostles. The truth is that he's not a successor of the apostles, he's not a Catholic as we've seen, and he's also not a valid priest, having been, quote, ordained in the invalid new rite of ordination that was promulgated by Antipope Paul VI. And if people think that this is too strong, no, it's not, it's warranted. We had planned to cover these facts about Strickland, perhaps in a more matter-of-fact fashion, but when I saw that he completely rejected state of Acantism again recently, it became clear that people need to know in very clear terms that he is a deceiver, he's not a Catholic, and he leads people astray. He doesn't know what he's talking about, and he doesn't have the Catholic faith. Strickland's removal also represents a fulfillment of the prophecy about the confusion and shock that people have when they see the counterchurch in Rome in the last days, which purports to be Catholic, but is not, 
removing its, quote, most conservative, quote, bishop, while it allows all kinds of radical heretics and liberals to operate. Strickland's repeated claim and emphasis that he is a successor of the apostles was strange, and it came across as if he was trying to convince himself of it. Uh, I remain a bishop and a successor of the apostles. I rejoice to remain a successor of the apostles. Who I am as a successor of the apostles. I'm still going to do my best to be a successor of the apostles. You know, I'm a successor of the apostles. Bishops were all successors of the apostles. His claim in that regard is fake. It's not true. He's not a Catholic, and he's not a successor of the apostles. People need to wake up and not fall for the false resistance and the false opposition. Completely reject the Vatican II sect and embrace the true traditional Catholic faith without compromise, as our material explains. Music